Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Lewis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. And with me today from the Pastani Studio is John McTavish. How are you doing, John? Good, man. It's starting to feel a little bit like Christmas, you know. It is. Yeah. I'm just, uh, what, we got a week left. Uh -huh. Left. And that's it. Yes, we better start wrapping. <laughs> yeah. Awkward. Did that, this, did that this weekend. So uh, a bunch of little kids to wrap for uh, all my uh, cousin's kids. So that's a lot of work. Pain. Um, all right, so today uh, we are talking about the Pitoro Terra Blanche Gordo. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not going to pretend like I know. Sounds right uh, to me. Sound pretty good? All right. Sounds pretty good. Toro Extra 6x54 uh, comes out of the De Los Reyes factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, rappers Ecuador and Connecticut, Binder and Filler, both from the Dominican Republic. Uh, price point is $18. Uh, cigars released in November of 2021. Uh, and these cigars were given to us by uh, Matt Masters, uh, Mr. Cigar Hound Dog. Um, so uh, he's uh, done this for us a, a few times, shared some cigars he liked and wanted to get our take on the review. So Super nice of him yep. to do this. Appreciate that, Matt. So if you uh, haven't checked those videos out on YouTube, you can find them at Cigar Hound Dog on YouTube. Go check it out. Um, I think he's posting reviews all, almost once a day now. So he's uh, Yeah, he's prolific. Got the, got the flow going now. So, uh, All right, John. So with all that out of the way, what was your experience like with this cigar? So I'll just preface by saying, going into this review, I was like, I don't know if this is the right cigar to give to me because it's Dominican, which, you know, I, I'm generally more poo-poo on Dominican. Seth is kind of the, I would say, the the board member that really likes Dominican blends. Mm -hmm. And it's a Gordo, which, you know, I'm like famous for like being a ah, big range gauge. Rah, 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 rah. Well, look at me having to eat my words because I thought this was quite good. Um, got a lot of light, light plus creamy wood, mild pepper, uh, wood combination, very restrained chocolate. Um, you know, the pepper kind of picked up on the post draw, but it had a short finish to it, which was nice. A little tobacco sweetness in the retrohale. Um, just a really, you know, I, I wouldn't even call that Dominican. Like it, it, it almost tastes like a... The Dominicans were trying to replicate a, a Nicaraguan profile to me. And then the second, third chocolate let off with some wood, spices and wood at light plus, um, creamy retro hail, spice accent, bread. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is good. And then the last third, it like, I felt bad because it was like, it was almost there. Started out with creamy chocolate, baking spices. And then as it progressed, it just kind of became more, you know, it's like when, like all the flavor kind of gets sucked out a little bit and becomes just really just wood is all that's left beyond. So a little bit of wood, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tannins. And that was kind of what the last third was mostly of. And I feel like, you know, it was almost there. I wish it would have been all the way there. Uh, draw was perfect. A little bit of waviness, but like, you know, if I don't have to reach for my lighter, I really don't care. Uh, and then the draw was maybe slightly into the open spectrum, but certainly in the range of perfect. So uh, yeah, this was quite the fun and enjoyable cigar to review. What about you? Uh, yeah, for me, this show with toasted cedar and lighter earth. Got some black pepper that joined a bit later. Uh, second, third saw some muskness join in, and the final third saw vegetal join in. Um, I thought this cigar had a pretty average flavor profile throughout, uh, kind of linear and mundane, nothing really that stepped up to keep my attention. Um, don't really see this cigar as something I'd come back to. High price point kind of puts it in that wow. same area for me as well. Um, had a little bit of issues with the burn, um, a little wavy, had to do a touch up and then a, a relight later on. So that's kind of my typical experience with stuff out of De Los Reyes. It's not all, you know, mm. nothing's really perfect from it. Um, but you, most of the time it's not going to affect the flavor profile, but it's just, you know, it's something that you kind of, you know, deal with as, as you're smoking it. But yeah, just, it didn't hit for me the same way it hit for you. Um, all right, let's get to the scores. Um, John, you were the, you were the winner here. 6.82. I gave it a 5.45. <laughs> How'd that 6.82 match up for you? Uh, I mean, it matches up well. Uh, it's just, it's a surprising score because I could probably count on one hand the number of 6.82s I've had. To, well, that's not true. It'd take two hands, but it's a very small number. Um, so it matches up well with the experience. It's just a very surprising high score for me. Yeah, my 5.45 matches as well. It was the average flavor profile throughout. Um, had some of those burn issues. Draw was perfect. But um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, 
no, I, I enjoy Connecticut. It's just that this one just didn't do it for me. Um, just wasn't enough um, excitement going on. I mean, more of just kind of a, I don't want to even call it a traditional Connecticut in, in that sense. It just didn't, I don't know that the, well, yeah. the wrapper and the up. filler just didn't mesh well together for me. Uh, any final thoughts from you on the cigar? Have you smoked any Patoros? Because this uh, is, I, I think, think the first Patoro I smoked. Before this, I think, but I don't recall what it was. Um, I would have to look and see if I've done anything before. I'm, I mean, I wonder, experience? huh? This is your first experience. It's my first Patoro. I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, granted the price points, you know, a little, little beefy, but, um, I'd be curious, you know, on the smaller ring gauge stuff, like if they had a Robusta or something like that, not necessarily the Terre Blanche, but, um, something else, um, I'm curious. I, I mean, obviously, based on this experience, it, it makes me curious to the other blends. So, yeah, uh, June and I did do a review on a Patoro back in uh, early 2017. Oh well. Um, yeah, um, I, I I liked it better than this cigar. Um, oh. but um, yeah. So that was uh, but I'm, let me I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was still daily. Yeah, still daily Reyes back then. Oh, so that's, I've been with them the entire time. So. Uh, Brazilian Cuba wrapper on it was a Toro Brazil. So um, good luck getting that again. Yep, exactly. All right, wherever you catch this video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. You can follow us on all the social media channels and catch all our review recaps on podcasts. So iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We will catch you on the next one. Ciao, Blanche.